Oh yeah, my friend, it's uh, it's an honor to uh, speak to you again and have you on our radio show. Uh, for people that don't recognize your beautiful hair, beautiful face, who the wow. hell are you? <laughs> I've nev never been introduced like that before, but all right, we'll go with it. <laughs> so who the hell are you? My name's Ryan. Great to meet you. Ryan, uh, welcome for Prescription Punk Rock. People know you um, for playing in municipal waste, but we're going to talk about uh, another project called BAT, uh, amazing project. But before getting into BAT, I'm curious, let's get back to when you were a kid. How did you start discovering music uh, and were people around you influence you into that journey? Yeah, my uh, older brother uh, was around, you know, by default, but I love my brother. We um, used to go to the library and rented cassette tapes. So, I mean, we would rent like Sabbath and Priest and Slayer tapes and we go home and record them, like dub them and make our own mixtapes. So that was my first introduction into like uh, finding music, you know, before I could go to record stores and stuff. But yeah, we did the old fashioned way, you know, I mean, pre-internet, discovering bands and then he was a little years older than me and we, he would uh, be like, Oh, this guy gave me this tape. You check this out. And um, just bonding with my brother over that. And then I kind of a little more obsessed with music than him. And I, the tables turn and I was introducing him to bands after a while still am. So, you know, got a lot of records back here, man. So you can see I'm a insane person when it comes to music. Yeah, I've got them everywhere. There's a couple in the back, but it's everywhere in the house. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, it's so cool. You know, I'm the older brothers. And I know that bound with, with you know, being brothers and sharing with each other. And it's so cool because, first of all, it creates something, you know, a unique uh, link with him. But also, it's so cool to discover with somebody that, you know, has passion. And I'm sure is proud of what you achieve. And yeah, uh, it, it's funny at the library. I, I I remember I tried to steal a couple of CDs, but they're the most crazy hardcore people to get them back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you probably got late fees still, man. You're probably going in debt. Yeah, man. One time it's gonna get me back like millions of dollars owning for like two records of Megadeth. <laughs> <laughs> So when was the the first time you you thought to yourself, hmm, maybe I'm gonna try to play music. I love that so deeply. I'm gonna try to play. And do you remember your first gig? Yeah, so I started on bass, which a lot of people don't know. Like I got a bass when I was 13. So I didn't pick up a guitar until I was 18. So bass has always been my first instrument, you know, and I um just jammed with like uh some friends in uh Virginia Beach where I'm from. Actually the first bass player of Municipal Waste, Andy Harris, was a drummer, and I was a bass player, and we did a band called A Front, which is just like a punk rock band we had um, early in high school. And I don't think we ever even played a show. We practiced like every day and, and jammed and tried to get in and battle the bands, and we sent our tape in, and they're like, yeah, you guys can't be in. Because we were like, we had like a song called like Fuck MTV and just stupid Victims of Society, you know, like just fucking all out dirtbag punk shit so i mean it didn't take uh till i started municipal waste really which was like the first band i ever played guitar in you know i played bass in a handful of bands that never went anywhere before that and um i was like well fuck it maybe it's maybe it's my instrument i'll just learn how to play guitar and you know i played guitar like a bass player and i played bass like a guitar player so i can't really win there so <laughs> but yeah i mean our the first show um with waste um it was just like a house party down the street in Richmond where we live and people were jumping all over each other then. So, I mean, nothing's really changed, you know, we would play like abandoned houses with dry ice and just squats. And, you know, I had a practice space behind my house. I did punk shows and <laughs> can't even talk about what went on back there, but it's just, the only thing you could really hurt was yourself, just broken glass everywhere, you know, squatters and fucking dirt bags all around me, but somehow we made it out of there. Yeah, those shit that get you, you know, the force and the strain to put it to another level, which a lot of bands don't understand. They want glory, love, like that, but it's not. I'm gonna write a book. I'm gonna write a book about this house one day because I mean, I almost fucking died in this place. So yeah, that's a whole nother. That's that's for the life story. That's not for today. We're talking about the bad album today. 
Yes, that project is such original. And, and I feel you, that's why I ask, because, you know, even in musical ways, you bring something different. And maybe it's the, like you said, like playing bass, guitar, like a, a bass and, and, you know, so uh, how, how that crazy ID started up and, and uh, how did you met the guys? Well, I'm sure you were friends way before, um, you know, doing that project, Bat. Yeah, so Bat started with me and Felix Griffin, who was, used to play in DRI. So Felix is a Texas guy, drummer, you know, and I would go through Texas and we we just became friends. You know, he came out to a way show probably 2007. We were like, man, we should do a band together. We just hit it off. You know, we were trying to do like something straightforward, like Discharge meets Celtic Frost meets Motorhead, you know, something just real stripped down. All the no nonsense bands, you know, and um, of course, it was just us talking about it. You know, Nick and I had started a band called Vulture, which is more straight up heavy metal stuff. So Nick and I were playing together. That's about 2009, 2010. And when the time came, like to do something with Felix, I was like, well, Nick, let's just do this as a real band, you know, not like a studio thing. And me and Nick started writing some songs together, just real stripped down, bare bones kind of shit. And uh, Felix came up and laid the drums down. 2013, we did a demo. 2014, we played our first shows with Satan uh, from the UK, which is a incredible band. One of the only heavy metal bands still making relevant albums, I think, that are fucking crushing. And we did our first three shows with Satan uh, about exactly 10 years ago. It was April 2014 were our first shows philly richmond baltimore and then we played uh tank crimes brain squeeze so we had a relationship with our buddy scotty out in uh oakland and that was our fourth show so we had a we kind of hit the ground running with that you know but um haven't been able to do as much as i want so it's cool to have this record coming out and actually on a label and everything it, it's so cool because you know like dri I, i'm sure was such an inspiration and you know, I'm I'm a metal head first, and then I I get into punk rock. But that's too well. There's that the I... perfect band for you right there. Besides Motorhead, I mean, you got crossover itself right there. I mean, that's why playing with Felix was a dream. You know, I mean, he's such a killer drummer. Probably my favorite part about DRI was Felix, and um, just a great guy too. We're still friends. You know, he's still he he chose to leave the band. It wasn't anything. Um, he had some rough stuff go down and. We always hope the best for him, but Felix is always welcome to come up and play a song with us too. You know, if we go through Texas, yeah, we're getting older. Life is uh, it's it's tough. Well, he was already still... older than all of us before, <laughs> yeah. before the band, but uh, also in better shape than all of us, man. I mean, Felix was uh, <laughs> Felix is like a kid at heart, man. It's so true, and it, it makes sense, and it kind of natural because you know I'm sure there's a lot you've been like with musical ways. There's a lot of of comparison between DRI and uh, of course the band, but it, yeah. it's just you 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 light the torch again of something that people did really enjoy. A scene that kind of step out for a couple of years, but it's so strong right now. So it makes sense that you make a fusion with that and create something brand new and original and different from Municipal Ways and DRI. And I'm sure yeah. it was something that you wanted to do. How much the originality is important for you when you're into creating? I think it's the most important. I think everyone should do their own thing. You know, what what's fun about just copying something, you know, that's, that's for the birds, man. But I mean, everything always is influenced by everything comes from something and musically, especially in this genre, a lot of it's been done, but I mean, we try to sound like bat. I mean, we're, we're not, we're not motorhead. We're not venom. We're not DRI. We're just, we're bat, you know? And it's like, I feel like with this record, it's even more coming into our own. And, you know, there's elements of punk rock and straight up heavy metal. And we're just, trying to play rock right down the middle. And it's it's tough to find a balance between the two styles. That's why I think DRI was so genius and, and you guys too. It, it You don't have to be too much and everything and no. overthinking. Take the elements you like from both and then cut out all the filler. You know, that's the way I look at it. Yeah, it's true. And, and uh, you know, is it more hard with time to write music because you have the experience uh, or is it still a huge challenge because you want to do something always more and, and step up your game? I think it, it's pretty easy with that. Like we get in a room and we're like, all right, what kind of song do we want to write? You know, cause everyone's, 
everyone's pulling from all these different influences. It's, it's really exciting actually. So, I mean, you know, it sounds cliche, but they just come together. They write themselves, you know, and I, I, I get so psyched that I go home and write the lyrics usually that night, you know, if, if I've already got an idea too, or have some stuff jotted down, I'll rework it around the song, you know? So, I mean, over the pandemic, that's all we did was write this record, man. So it was, uh, it kept us something positive out of it, you know? Yeah, it's a good point. I think it, it really hit the world. It's it's kind of being on stop for two years, but creating and, and change it into something positive. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will stop you saying, you know, those songs saved my life or it changed my life or my view or whatever. Um, yeah, it's I think it's uh, it's the magic of music. And I think it's kind of a living thing. It it it's it's yours until you release it and then it's going everywhere and it changed people emotion and way of thinking and everything. Yeah. It's exciting because, you know, I've been doing interviews all day and this, these are the first people that have actually heard the record. So you've listened to it. I take it. Yeah. So I just like hearing people's opinion of it, you know, because we've been sitting on it for two years, man. So it's just like, we're dying for people to hear it. Yeah, for you, it's old stuff. <laughs> I know, but I mean, it's making me excited again just to talk about it. So um, I'm all about it. I love it because uh, we feel the energy. Like, uh, I think that at some point, every band was final tap before the pandemic and got reborn into loving it and understand that we can love something that, you know, kind of make us who we are anyways but uh i love the records i listened to it three times and it's cool. a complete record i mean i don't skip a Thanks. fucking songs it's it's well built it's uh, we feel the experience but we also feel that there was a struggle around that creating all that stuff so it brings something that i just can't wait to see live because i know it's gonna be another level that's great. I love hearing that, man. Yeah, it was a, you know, it was a really hard time. I mean, the riots were happening here in, in Richmond. And uh, like, that's why I wrote that song, Bastardized Force, about like an anti-police brutality song, anti-systematic racism, like, and Bats usually only tackled like fantasy type topics. And I was like, shit was getting real. I was like, I'm going to write a real fucking punk rock song that's like, lyrically, you know, Nick came up with the riffs for that one. But it was like, let's just write a fucking mean ass song, anti-cop song, you know? Cause I mean, it, shit was going down, man. We, it was a bad time. So um, yeah, it definitely resonated on us. Yeah. And it felt right. Um, I think a lot of Ben restrained themselves saying what they think um, when it comes to politics. Um, and it, it's kind of weird because the punk scene was all about that when it started up, you know, yeah. trying to ask questions and find solutions and change things. Uh, so it's cool to see that, you know, there's still people that uh, want to stop things that have, have nonsense, you know, police brutality has been going forever. And it's it's just, you know, and like people, human have so hard time dealing with power. I know. Yeah. And I mean, and that's all we can do is just keep, you know, keep talking about it. So, you know, maybe people will wise up or they'll think before they act, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, because I'm sure there's cops that are fans. Or the cops are to come beat me up after they see this interview. <laughs> you never know. Could backfire, man. I don't know. Back in the days, like, the band, you know, that thing about that, it never happened. Actually, a lot of cops that I know love, like, punk rock and everything and are not the typical cops type, you know. It's, uh, it's well, you're in Quebec, minority. too, man. Y yeah, yeah, it's way more soft. <laughs> U.S. is fucked, man. Yeah, I, I can't. <laughs> Let's let's move on from that before we we get heated up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, you just spoke about Quebec. You always um, have a huge love affair uh, between Quebec and, of course, municipal waste. But I'm sure that with that, it's a project to come here. Is there any chance to see you in Canada and Quebec? Yeah. Um, well, Felix couldn't get into Canada, so that was one of the reasons we didn't come up here because um, of the cops. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, we we um, it's a shame because the Necrot tour goes to Canada, but Waste is playing Australia, so we have to drop out of the the tour after Boston. But that means that we need to do our own Canadian tour because um, we just went to South America with Exciter, one of the greatest Canadian bands of all time. Um, we had a great time. I I just got back last week with Bat and Exciter tour, so 
we're gonna um we got some plans to come up to canada we're talking to them about doing some stuff and uh i love canadian metalheads and punks man so i mean you guys eat it up so there's no reason not to go we're all legally able to get into canada now so i think chris has got a pretty squeaky clean record our drummer now so we can um so far so good so yeah we'll get up there man we we definitely want to it, it's like canada is a pain in the ass i think it's the the border's whole, tough yeah of, of of the whole fucking world <laughs> it's the hardest one in the whole world no and i've been everywhere it is still the hard they put they they told me i'd been arrested last time i go can you tell me what i did and they just were i literally got almost got mad they try to make you mad so you get aggressive and then they say you can't get in Because, you know, I'm always going to the border. It's four in the morning. I haven't slept. I get up and they're like, you you lied. You said you were arrested. I was like, well, tell me what the fuck I did. Because what was I, 18, drinking in public? I don't remember doing that shit, you know? You just yeah. have to say, yeah, I was arrested. I'm going to get arrested all the time. So that way you're not lying. Last time I went to the border, they say, like, Eric is a criminal name. I'm like, do you have any statistic to prove your? This powers? fucking border guy was such a nerd too, man. He was doing it to everybody, man. I it, sometimes you just cruise through. I mean, I've had I've had every experience imaginable, but you just got to keep your cool and go. Yeah, yeah, I did it. I'm the one that got arrested in 1998 or wherever the fuck it was, man. Yeah, it sucks because there's a lot of band that can, you know you know, come to, to Quebec and Canada because of that. And I remember yep. with the Rockfest, I used to work eight years for the Rockfest and we had a lawyer team that uh, held the band get here and, and deal that fucking sometimes most of the time it's just like they smoke weed. They got arrested like for possession. Yeah, of... it's, it's, it's nonviolent shit. Um, one funny weed thing is hear, legal the... here. So what I the know fuck? it's like, get up, get off our back. Weed's not hurting anybody, but, um, One this girl said one time I thought it was really funny. She's like, I don't listen to a band if they can if they can get into Canada. <laughs> like that means they're soft. <laughs> I was like, that's tough, man. I like that. I ain't gonna listen to your band if you're allowed in Canada. What the fucking call? It's just stupid. It's funny though. Oh man, the artwork of the record is fucking amazing. I mean, like, oh, it's one of the artwork you see. You're just like, I need that on vinyl. Uh, who did the artwork? Yeah, it's coming out on vinyl, of course, too. So, yeah, that was a guy named Brandon Holt did the illustration, the pen on ink. And he's a tattoo artist in Minneapolis and a, a crazy artist, too. But um, the color was actually painted by uh, Margaret Oliski, who did the bat creature. Actually, I, I have the mask here that it's based on because I pulled it out for my last interview. So here's the bat. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. Right. So I had this reference I can give uh, artists with 3D. So I sent him, you know, pictures of the mask. He, I wanted to do a three force profile of him coming down, which is to me more menacing. The Wings of Chains, he's straight on, which was designed by um, Christoph Bright, a German guy who did the, the original art for the first album. So I'm keeping the character the same, but just now in more of an action shot. So yeah, Brandon Holt did the inking and uh, Margaret did the painting and uh, we just teamed up for that, for it like that. And I wanted like a old school, like Italian horror pulp comic kind of vibe and uh, they nailed it. It's so cool. That, that's another thing, you know, I love that Ben brings something more than just the music live. Uh, the art's just know, as important to me as the music. Yeah, we cover a lot of show and my girlfriend is a photograph <laughs> and, and that's when I, I realized the importance of everything surround the music, you know, then just spend that play and that's it, you know. You got killer pictures and everything. And it 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 bring the machine to the you know package, people yeah. talk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean when I a lot of the bands I like I found out just by looking at the artwork. I mean I, I think Iron Maiden's like the best example of that. Like you see those covers, you're like, this is yeah, I, I got I just Got Eddie tattooed on my knee, man. There's... Oh, shit. Wow. See oh, that? first records. My favorite. Yeah, best one, right? <laughs> I've been meaning to get that for a while. I got the Crypt Keeper on my other knee. So I was like, I'm going to put Eddie on my other. Yeah. So obviously a huge Maiden fan here. And um, yeah, that's what you see. You want to, you, you're like, this is what I want. And then usually the music walks the walk. When it doesn't, at least you still have some cool artwork, you know, for the record. I'm. I'm a big fan of uh, heavy album covers. Who isn't? 
it's so true. That's why that's why I, I bought my first uh, Iron Maiden record. It was Fear of the Dark on cassette. Uh, the artwork got me. I didn't know the band, and I I listened to it. It it didn't find a way in me at first, but then I saw the video for Fear of the Dark and people singing, and I was like, oh my god, yeah, those people love that band so much, and I fell in love. Fear with of the, the Dark's band. got a. Uh... Fear of Dark's got one of my favorite Maiden songs that I feel like gets overlooked is uh, Afraid to Shoot Strangers. It's one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs. I, I love Judas, my guy. Be Quick or Be Dead, yeah. it's one of the most heavy songs of Iron Maiden. I'm I'm a first two album Maiden guy. I'm a Diano guy, first and foremost. But actually, Fear of the Dark, is if people sleep on that one, I do dig that record. I feel you. Diano was kind of punk with the image and everything. And yeah, it, I mean, I, I love... Just, it, that I I just like just like I like Kill 'Em All better than Master of Puppets. It's mm-hmm. like if people argue with me, but I just like the raw rock and roll bass fucking metal, man. That's my shit. I'm not a huge Metallica fan, so I'm yeah. I'm I don't really. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I hate that I even brought them up because it's such a tired topic. It's like, yeah. oh, you like Metallica? Cool. There's a million other bands. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Like, but you know, I think that you have the same approach. Uh, the fans are so important and we feel that we're part of the family. When I met yeah. you, it, it struck me like, uh, and I think, it, you know, I, I, I hate those rock stars that are bored and don't care about the fans. I think that if you you have that spot and you you enjoy what you're doing, it's part of the fucking deal. It's people. Yeah, that and, and there's, there. some, there's some about like the initial energy of bands too. their first attempt at something. It's always like passionate because it comes from it's just they're there you can tell they're excited you know it's one thing to be like oh i only like the band's first records but usually the first records like are monumental because it's like something fresh and you know the band is excited you know so there are kinds of two type it. of band there's a band that start with the killer records the first three four album are amazing and then they kind of get lost and there's the one who First was okay, second, and you don't see them coming, and then boom, their fourth record is fucking amazing, and they just blow your mind till yeah. you know they fucking leave the scene. That's the beauty of music, man. You never know. It's true, I, and and there's a lot of metal band actually that uh, happening, and I I don't mean like Exodus have a beautiful career, but their new records, Testament, Exodus, Saxon, they're fucking amazing. Saxon's Better been really ever. consistent. I, I I commend Saxon for sure. Yeah, yeah, if you into Maiden, that's, that's you know, it's, uh, yeah. So, um, of course, we're going to wait in Quebec. What's the best way to directly encourage the band if people got music budget and want to buy merch? Um, so, you can pre-order under the Crooked Claw now directly from Nuclear Blast. We got a couple of videos out, Right for Exorcism, Street Banger, which I directed in Richmond. They're, they're out now. And um, if you just want to go to YouTube, you can check out those songs i'm pretty sure they're streaming everywhere too but yeah pre-order the record you know get it that way you get it right when it comes out um it comes out on cd too if you don't like vinyl it's got compact discs you know or fucking get the mp3s if you're into that shit or <laughs> whatever you're into you know take them with you bring them on the road i i always buy old car that has still have a, a cd players and i will never buy a new car that i don't have a cd player you know what? I, I've actually, I got a 1987 CD player downstairs and like CDs don't sound so bad, man. After you've listened to like compressed fucking MP3s, it's like, you know what? I get what they were going with CDs, but you know, they always get scratched and they skip in the car. That's what I hated about them. So um, yeah, even vinyl are way more, you know, you... yeah, I, you know, I tried to put a record player in my car, but that skipped even worse. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, Ryan, thank you so much. Uh, of course, we're going to wait in Canada and Quebec. Thanks. For we're going to come up there, man. You, you heard it here first. We're coming up there. Give us a call. Tell the border to let us in, man. Yeah, and bookers and everything, write them. We want to see them everywhere in Quebec. Um, yeah, there's beautiful spots. And, uh, of course, if you don't have money, we get it. It's rough time. It's fucking everywhere when it's going to be released. Every platform, it's on YouTube. Go check just hit me them. up for guest list, like all, like everyone does. Just hit me up. I'll get you in, man. Come on. Oh, thank you. But actually, normally I pay for my tickets. It sounds okay. weird, but you know, I, I'm I have a good job and everything, so it's I was pretty rare. The, I was just telling the people. I, I wasn't really just telling you. Oh yeah. I like when strangers ask for guest lists. It's sick. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, get the record. I mean, it'll be up on. I'm sure it'll be up on YouTube. Someone always uploads it. You know, however you want to. Li- I just want people to hear it. Honestly, it's great, man. I'm I'm excited for people to hear it. 
It is. It's true. And of course, uh, when you come, I'm going to hit you up so we can shake and take some pictures and drink some fucking beer. We got great beer now in Quebec. All <laughs> right, man. We love microbrewery stuff, craft beer. Well, fucking get me a soda water then. I don't like craft beer. <laughs> oh, it, it, yeah. A lot of people are not into that. What, what do you like to drink? I just quit drinking, man. Oh, cool. Me too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you copying me. No, I'm taking yeah. a break, man. We'll see. We'll see how long it goes. But uh, yeah. I always do I six do months. Oh, that's incredible. I haven't got that far. I'm like 110 days or 109 days or something. But yeah, I mean, I, I try not to talk about it as much. I put it out there in the universe, but um, you could do a whole nother podcast on that, man. I don't know. Let's let's focus on music. But um, sometimes taking breaks good, man. You know, I fucking drank for 35 years straight, so it takes a toll on you, man. Yeah, yeah. I I start doing one month for last the last twenty years. But you sound like you got your stuff three. together. Yeah, you seem like you got a. I I don't know how to do moderation. I'm an all or nothing person. Yeah, so. yeah. It get me to that, but yeah, I was that drinker too back in the days. But it's it it's the sleep, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's I cool. Am... Well, hey, man. I'll, I'll come. Uh, I love going to bars. Still, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it with a na, man. It's all good. So let's kick it. Fuck yeah, Ryan. Thank you for your time and thanks for the friendship. See you in Quebec, brother. You got it, man. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye bye. Later. Frustration is what you need. No more inhibition. Set yourself free. Just let go. That's my only plea. I'll come from frustration is what you need.